Did you know that even the complex passwords can be hacked? Don't use it unless you have permission to do so. Hi, the hacker is here. You're maybe using a strong password or a password manager and you will probably feel safe. But if you don't pay enough attention, you might just deliver all your passwords in a silver plate to your attacker. Let's find out how. This is the web portal for Bitwarden and I'm going to use my account and once I log in, I'm prompted with a six digit number for my Authy application. Continue and I land on my account. This is just a test account, so don't bother compromising it. Even if you do, it really doesn't matter. It's just for testing purposes. With that said, how can we take over this account? Well, there's this cool project called Evil Genix 2. I hate this. Reject all. So this is the uh, project I'm talking about. There are many videos that explain how it works and the documentation is clear, so I'm not going to cover that. What I'm going to do is connect to my server. This is the Evil Genix server that we're going to be using and then run Evil Genix. Now you do see that we have a fishlet. A fishlet is a configuration file that tells Evil Genix how to proxy the traffic through your phishing website. I'm going to show you what this fishlet is about. Go to pull requests and here you can find a fishlet for Bitwarden and this is my contribution to the project. Let's actually select the file content. I'm going to put it in the fishlets directory. This is the directory that contains all fishlets. You can see we have Facebook, Amazon, LinkedIn, OneLogin, Outlook, ProtonMail, Okta, etc. etc. It's very useful if you're doing red team engagements and you want to collect credentials or gain access to accounts, especially if they're uh, protected with uh, two factor authentication. This is just for the good guys. Remember, use it responsibly. All right, let's create a file. Let's call it bitwarden.yaml. And this is just my crippled way of creating the file and putting content into it. I could also use Vim. Sorry, nano guys or Emacs guys. What I'm doing here is defining a subdomain, which is vault. Whenever I go to vault.thehackerish.com, all the traffic will be uh, proxied to vault.bitwarden.com. Uh, I'm not going to use any filters, so anything that goes through my uh, phishing website would go directly to Bitwarden. I'm not using any authentication tokens, which is the list of session cookies. From my testing with Bitwarden, they are using JWT bearer tokens, so this does not really apply here. And to give you a clearer idea, I'm going to record an authenticating session in Burp and show you exactly what are the important requests to pay attention to. Hackerish, if I could type, and this is my super secret password. And let's log in. I'm going to input the 2FA code and continue. All right, so let's jump back to Burp Suit and see what are the requests we're generating. The first one here is pre-logging, which is a post request containing the email. In the next request, post identity connect token, we don't have uh, the plain text password, it's the password hashed version. The next request is sending the two-factor token along with our request. And here actually you see access token and a bunch of other data. One important thing though is that there's another request which is sent to the same endpoint with a refresh token. And based on that, we receive an access token that is uh, used subsequently in the future requests inside the authorization header. The last request is call to API slash sync with that authorization better token. And here we receive the encrypted database, the name, 
password and these are the encrypted version of the secret so we're not really interested in any authentication tokens here because as we saw uh, we are after the refresh token which generates the access token we would like also to capture the username of the password and the refresh token from the post request finally to consider that the victim has authenticated successfully we define the authentication URL to be API sync, which is nothing but the famous request that we have here, which returns the encrypted database. To just spice things a little bit, we added a force post to force the user to remember the two factor, this checkbox here. Even if the victim doesn't check this one, their next authentication will not require two factor authentication. And finally, we define the login endpoint, which is nothing but the root path under vault.bitwarden.com. And let's run evil GeneX. So here you can see that the fishlet has been loaded. The first thing we need to do is find a host name. And the way to do this is just fishlet, host name, the name of the fishlet, bitwarden, and uh, the host name. Now, if we run fishlets, you can see it here. We will enable this fishlet. Fishlets enable Bitwarden and it automatically register a Let's Encrypt certificate for our subdomain. What we're going to do is create a lure, which is the listener. So lures create Bitwarden and we have the ID zero. If I type lures get URL with the ID of our lure, which is zero, we get this URL. We can go ahead and send it to our victim and so there you have it you're successfully proxying all the requests through the hackerish.com to the real bitwarden website suppose that the victim doesn't pay attention to the url i'm going to use my legitimate account now if i try with the wrong password i indeed have a wrong password message and if i go back to my evil Genix logs it has captured the username and the password hash now let's use the real password once more to fa token all right now the victim has landed on his own account but always through my phishing website we have successfully captured the username the password hash and more importantly the refresh token and evilgenix has detected that the authentication session is complete because it saw this call to api slash sync now we need to somehow be able to decrypt these blobs but wait we need the plain text master password for that when i was looking for a way to do that i stumbled upon this cool lastpass blog bypassing lastpass's advanced ubg mfa and at some point they were talking about injecting some javascript in the login page to first copy the password field to another hidden field before the login starts which i think is quite scary because not only you can relay the traffic but you can also poison it once you have that plain text password even if the user is using 2fa i mean if you're not using 2fa then you're automatically screwed i want to showcase this in action because why not however i'm not going to reveal the code you should do it on your own if you're script kiddie, there's no place for you here, sorry. You're gonna have to leave. Let's now enable the second one, Bitwarden. Fishlets enable Bitwarden and lures create Bitwarden and lures get URL zero. Let's try with this new URL. I'm going to log out. And voila, you can see that we have the username and the password in plain text. Emotional damage! So, what are you waiting for? Consider subscribing. I was curious to know how to write fishlets for Evil Genix, and surprisingly, it was really easy to develop one for Bitwarden. So next time, when you're trying to connect to your own Bitwarden account or pretty much any other password manager which has a web page, pay attention, double check, make sure that you're visiting the real website. And second, enable that two-factor authentication, seriously.
Just go and do it now. Go to account settings, security, two-step logging, and here you can define your two-factor authentication provider. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please subscribe and thumbs up and see you next time. As always, stay curious, keep learning and go find some bugs.